Okay, so um, this one's just another example of something. I've put it in the hinged section, but you may have noticed this isn't actually a hinged question. And so I've written that up in this purple box up here. Shh, shh, shh. I've said even though it's not hinged, this will behave in the same way. There will be a reaction force and a frictional force instead. So as it pushes into the wall, there will be a force pushing out. And because it wants to slip down or slip up, we don't know there's going to be a frictional force. But it's just like the hinge questions where we don't know if Y is going up or Y is going downwards. So we can still treat it in that same way, OK? okay how will you slip down? Just directly use the wall? Um, because either it might slip where this bit wants to go upwards, or it might be so heavy that the string isn't enough to keep it going up anymore. So it could either be that this, this tension in this string, it could be a really, really, really tight elastic band. And that could be such a way that it makes it slip like that. Or it could be that the mass is so big that it wants to. I don't, I'm trying to th figure out how it could be. But there are ways that it could either slip down or it could slip up, depending on how stretchy the string is or things like that as well. OK, so we've got this uniform rod, mass 3m. So I'm going to just start putting some of these things on here. Length 4a. So I know either side of this is 2a, but hopefully we'll just remember that. Uh, against a rough vertical wall, one end of the light and extensible string BD is attached to the rod there. So this is going to be the tension. Um, and it says that AD is equal to 3A. So I've got that information there. I think it actually might have been this question. And I, I can now see what's going to happen here. Um, so, sorry, I just got a bit confused there. A particle of mass 3M is attached to the rod at C. So we've got two particles that are now 3MG. And that distance away is X. The rod is in equilibrium in a vertical plane, perpendicular to the wall. The tension in the string is 25 over 4 mg. So I'm actually going to change that from tension. I'm just going to write it as 25 over 4 mg. Now, because they haven't actually told us what the angle is, does, do you know where you can extract the information about the angle, where that actually comes from? Yeah, we know the lengths of the sides, actually. So we've already been told that this side over here is 3a, and the side along the bottom is 4a. Now, if you name the top angle as theta, you would have that tan theta is the opposite over the adjacent, which is 4a over 3a or 4 over 3. But if you named the angle in here alpha, then you would have had that tan alpha is 3 over 4. So we just need to make a decision. Do we want to use the angle that's at the bottom, or do we want to use the angle at the, at the top? It doesn't matter. Which one do we want to use? Could you just turn that off? The bottom one. OK, so we're going to use, uh, we're going to use alpha for this question. And we're going to use that tan alpha is 3 over 4. If we need to, we then also know that sine alpha is 3 over 5 and cos alpha is 4 over 5, if we need them. OK? Well, we probably will need them, won't we? So first, we want to show that x is equal to 3a. I need some extra forces on here. Even though it's friction, I'm tempted to just call it x and y. And the reason I'm tempted to call it x and y is just because it seems to fit with the hinge questions. But I know that y is friction. I also know that y is mu times x as well. Did they tell us anything about mu? No, here we go. OK, so um, first we want to show that x is 3a. Any ideas of the best place to take moments? A. Yep, I'm going to take moments at a. So when I take moments at a, I've got a couple of really easy forces there. I've got 3mg multiplied by 2a plus 3mg multiplied by x. That's 3mg multiplied by 2a and 3mg multiplied by x. The other one I need to be a little bit more careful with. I want to find out the perpendicular distance from the point A to the line of action of the force, which is here. So I need to find out what this distance is here. Remember, you might do this in a physics way and resolve the force. But I've got a triangle that looks like this. That's my right angle. That's the distance I want. And that's 4A, and that is alpha. So what's the distance? sine alpha, so we get that it's 4a sine alpha multiplied by the tension, which is 25 over 4 mg. What do you spot happening here? The mg's cancel. Yep, mg and the a. mg and the a. So we get 6 plus 3x equals, uh, well, the 4 here and the 4 here also cancels. So we've got 25 sine alpha. This times by 25 is 15. Yes? The A's haven't cancelled. You're so right. Yeah, of course, because they don't all have an A. So I can only cancel the MGs, right? So I can cancel that MG and that MG. And I can also cancel the 4 with the 4. 
So I end up with 6a plus 3x equals 25 times sine alpha, which is 15. So I get 15a. So 3x is 9a. So x is 3a. OK? Yeah? Of resolving the force. OK, so is that what you mean by taking the tension? So the other thing we could have done is we could have taken this tension force, and I could have split it into a tension force going up and a tension force going along. I can either draw it going along here. Sometimes we've drawn them going along like this as well. Now, if this is alpha, this one at the top is alpha. So the one running along the top, would you mind just being a little bit quieter, please, if you're doing something else? Can you just mind just whispering instead? So you get 25 over 4 mg cos alpha. And along the side would be 25 over 4 mg sine alpha. So the, if you were going to just use the perpendicular distance, you would have from A, it's 4A multiplied by 25 over 4 mg sine alpha, which is 4A multiplied by 25 over 4 mg sine alpha. OK, so there's the two ways of doing it. The way we've now got that diagram drawn is OK. Um, the only thing you need to be careful of is when you've resolved it, this force, although it looks like it's far away from A, actually it's acting in this direction, so you wouldn't include that one. But I've just drawn it in that way to try and make my diagram a little bit less busy. It then says, show that the horizontal component of the force exerted by the wall has magnitude 5 mg. So this is actually the normal reaction, but really we're just going to do that using resolving forces. So this was part A of the question. Which of the forces am I trying to find, x or y? y. X. I'm just trying to find out what x is. And it looks like x is equal to the tension resolved in this direction, which is 25 mg cos alpha. So x is equal to 25, sorry, over 4 mg cos alpha. And we know that cos alpha is 4 over 5. So we get that simplifies that x is equal to 5 mg. And then it says the coefficient of friction between the wall and the rod is mu. Given that the rod is about to slip, find the value of mu. Well, we've got to do the only thing that we haven't done yet, which is to resolve the forces in the up and down direction. So when we resolve up and down, the way that we drew our diagram, boys, can you just be a bit, it's Hamza, I think your voice is just quite like deep, so it, like, it carries really easily. So in the up and down direction, we've got y plus 25 over 4 mg sine alpha equals 6 mg, OK? So that's y plus 25 over 4 mg sine alpha is equal to 6 mg. I just added those mgs together. Now, sine alpha was 3 over 5. Is that right? So that's 25 over 4 uh, multiplied by 3 over 5 mg equals 6 mg. So what's that? 75 over 20 or 15 over 4 mg. So y equals 6 mg minus 15 over 4 mg. And so y is whatever that is. I could do this in my head. Don't hate me for being lazy. Thank you. Of course, a 9 over 4 mg. And that's positive, which means the way we drew it in the diagram happened to be correct. But it could have been slipping um, upwards, but it's actually slipping downwards. And we just want to find out what the coefficient of friction is. Now, we know that y is equal to mu r and that x is the normal reaction. So all I need to do is to find out what mu is. I need to take the value of y and I need to divide it by x. Now, y is 9 over 4 mg and x is 5 mg, so the mg's cancel, and you get 9 over 20, which is 0.45. Hopefully, um, what I've done is made you do enough of these very challenging questions that you're actually starting to feel quite comfortable with how these questions are working, like the repetition of the way that these things seem to be going, I'm hoping is, um, is good. Now, I have to say, Compared to last year, you guys are like much stronger at this topic than the students last year. And you know how well they did last year. They got such amazing results. So this is a really, really positive sign. You've like, I feel quite confident with the way you're doing this. So we've still got about half an hour. If you haven't done some of those questions that are suggested in the yellow, um, the yellow ones, then you can try doing some extra ones of those questions too. Okay? Yeah, Shahid. Yes, of course.